So how do I open my pool if I'm on a chlorine system? Well, really, it's very simple. First of all, you're going to hook the pump and filter system. Get the hoses all hooked up, get everything you know, hooked up the back the way it was. Then you're going to raise the water level. You want to get that water level up above the second screw, just a little bit from the top. If you remember from basic pool school, we talked about if the water level ever is too low and you turn the pump on, a vacuum will form and the pump will lose prime. So you want to make sure before you fire up the pump that the water level is up high enough. Make sure that your filter is hooked up properly, all the hoses are hooked up. Basically, just fire up your filter, prime the pump and fire up the filter, and that water will start circulating. Once the water is circulating and everything is fine, you're going to look at the water. Say, okay, is my water clear or is it green? Well, if it's clear, you probably opened your pool in March, or at least very early in the pool season. We always recommend you open your pool in March because below water temperatures of 65 degrees, nothing grows. So if you open your pool up before the water temperature has gotten above 65, it will always be crystal clear. If it is crystal clear, which we hope it is, you open the cover, the water is circling, the water is clear, there's some dirt on the bottom, then all you really need to do is get a spring startup kit. And this will have small quantities of all the chemicals that you might need. And then you'll have to get some chlorine tablets, of course. And that's all you'll need to purchase to get your pool up and running. So let's talk about what you'll do. Water is circulating, it looks pretty good, some dirt on the bottom. Well, first of all, of course, you're going to test the water. You're going to test for pH and alkalinity. Of course, there'll be no chlorine at that point. In the startup kit, you have pH plus and pH minus. You simply add those as you need it. The alkalinity you really don't have to mess with right away because it hasn't been exposed to any rainwater. That will come down the road. Now, after that, all you're going to do is add some chlorine tablets, get your chlorine level up. Early in the season, I'd like to get the chlorine level up higher than normal because nobody's going to be swimming. You know, three to five parts per million, which is a little high, will help to make, keep sure that the pool stays absolutely crystal clear and also make sure that nothing starts as we get into the spring rains. So get the chlorine level up a little bit. There's a pound of shock, the blast that comes in the kit. Shock the pool and you're up and running. Just start your weekly routine at that point. Two times a week, add your chlorine tablets. Once a week, shock the pool. Once a week, test your alkalinity and pH. You're up and running. It's very simple. Now, on the other side of the coin, if you procrastinated and you didn't open your pool in March and you wait, waited until that water temperature got up to about 70 or 72, your water's going to be green and it's going to be kind of nasty and you're going to say, oh God, what do I do? Well, again, you get the water level up, get it circulating. That's how it starts. And then, of course, test the alkalinity and test the pH. Get those balanced. Alkalinity, again, is not as important as it usually is because right now we're just getting fired up. And then you're going to start adding chlorine. Now, when I say you're going to start adding chlorine, you're going to add a lot of chlorine. You may be adding six, seven, eight tablets every third day because as we discussed in the pool school, if you have a lot of algae in the pool, you're going to use a lot of chlorine. So it's going to take a lot of chlorine to kill the algae. So you're just going to keep adding chlorine. On the test strip, you know, sometimes I'll get the chlorine level up to 10 parts per million, as high as it tests, just to kill that algae and get it killed. Well, as the algae dies, it's going to start falling to the bottom. And we'll talk about that in a second. But over time, and it only takes usually three, five, sometimes seven days to get all that algae killed and get it to fall. But you're going to want to keep shocking the pool with the blast. Now, I recommend almost every other day a pound of blast per 10,000 gallons because you want to keep reactivating the chlorine. You have to get the chlorine up, but you also have to keep it active. And that's what the blast will do. So, test the pH, test the alkalinity, get your chlorine level up, shock the pool pretty often, and the stuff will start to die. Well, as it dies, it will fall to the bottom. And then you have to vacuum it out. As you know, vacuuming is not a fun chore. But if you are in the beginning of the year and it's the springtime, what a lot of people will do, if you have a sand filter, and I'm afraid you cannot do this with an element filter, if you have a sand filter, you can put the vacuum and the filter head on pump to waste. And what will happen is you pump that dirty water from the vacuum head at the bottom of the pool. You can just pump that water out 
you know, remember direct that over towards your neighbor's yard, but pump that out and that'll speed things along a little bit. On an element system, it really isn't necessary. What'll happen is you'll vacuum actually a little better on the element system and you'll catch it all. But after you get the pool clear, it will be time to clean your filter right away. And that time I would recommend using the car wash, going down to the quarter car wash. Use that wand to spray it out from the inside real well and then on the outside as well. So that's really your steps. Test the alkalinity and pH, test the water. Get the chlorine level up, keep shocking the pool, and then vacuum it all up. Will it take some time? Yes, it will. It usually can take as much as 10 days or two weeks. Once that is finished, then I recommend copper algicide. Remember, algicide does not help kill algae. It prevents its growth. So it really isn't necessary to put this in until after your water's clearing up. And this is always going to be about six ounces initial treatment for 10,000 gallons. This, this quart here will last really probably all summer long for almost any size pool. Um, and that's a preventive treatment. And finally, after the water is circulating and everything's looking good, conditioner. Remember, conditioner does not help clear the pool. It doesn't help your chlorine at all. What it does do is it help keeps the chlorine from evaporating because of sunlight. So it's not important to put the conditioner in until after you're up and running. Now, I recommend that you take your water sample after you've gotten it clear um, to your local family leisure store and have them test it. Test to make sure how much conditioner you need. Because remember, too much is not really a good thing in conditioner. It actually slows things down. And too little is difficult because you're not going to keep the chlorine in as well. So I'd recommend taking it to your local family leisure store. If you can't get to us, just take it to your local pool store and say, hey, I want to have my water tested for conditioner. So that's it. Let's hope you open your pool early and it's nice and crystal clear and very, very simple and easy. And if not, it's not that difficult. Um, if it's a little green and you have frogs and things like that, just a little bit more time and trouble. At any time, if we can help, just let us know. What